I just took delivery of the dream bike I've been drooling over for the last couple of years and I couldn't wait to get it built up and ready to ride. In today's video, I'll explain why I ponied up for the coveted Allied Cycle Works BC40 and I'll give you a first look at the complete build and all the nitty gritty specs and details. By the way, thanks for tuning into Dirty Teeth and welcome back to the channel. Let's get cracking. If you've watched any of my recent videos, you might be asking, Alan, you just built up a brand new Niner Rocket 9 before the Colorado Trail Race, so why did you need yet another full suspension bike? Good question, and need is probably too strong of a word. No, I didn't really need another bike, and I'm definitely not getting rid of the Niner, which is fantastic and proved itself on the CTR. But I did sell my older generation Niner Rocket 9 that I had living on my indoor trainer. I also travel for work a lot, and sometimes my trainer comes with me, so Black Beauty has now become my dedicated travel bike slash trainer bike. I love the comfort and feel of having a mountain bike on the trainer, and if I get some time on the weekend, I'll throw on the wheels and squeeze in a real ride or two as well. It'll also still be my go-to for certain single track shred packing missions since I've gotten it totally dialed in for bike packing. But these days I'm doing less and less longer bike packing events and focusing more on epic 50 to 100 milers that I can tackle in a day and still be home for dinner. So I wanna have a capable bike always at the ready for my laps on the local trails as well as my never ending bucket list of adventures. If I've learned anything over the years, it's that I need to make the logistics of riding as convenient and inviting as possible, or it's easy to lose motivation and say forget it and not ride at all. So that's why I wanted a second full suspension bike, but why'd I choose the Allied BC40? Another good question. If you're not familiar with Allied, they're located in Rogers, Arkansas, which is basically a suburb of Bentonville. So right in the mix of the mountain biking revolution that's been taking place there for the last number of years. Every Allied frame is completed 100% in-house from the inception and design through to the final paint. They machine their own molds and tooling and even their own suspension linkage. And every piece of carbon is hand laid by skilled craftspeople right there in their factory. This attention to detail does demand a premium price tag. So yeah, you're currently looking at a 4350 starting price tag for a BC40 frame set with shock and headset. And since each bike is made to order one at a time, you're usually looking at a one to two month lead time to get your hands on one. But along with this, you get to choose from a myriad of color options for the frame and the logos, and you can even go with 100% custom paint color if you really wanna make your bike one of a kind. I kept it simple, so I went with Silver Allied logos, and I chose one of their stock colors called Miami Vice Green. If you're old like me and you ever watched the show Miami Vice, you won't be surprised by what I named it, Crockett. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you're curious, the frame weight for Crockett came in at four pounds, 11 ounces, or 2,126 grams, including the Fox shock, through axle, and derailleur hanger. By the way, before I forget, Bike Rumor made a great video of an Allied factory tour, which I highly recommend if you want to take a peek behind the curtain of their operation. I'll link to that down below. And if you want to know how they came up with the name BC40, I was curious. It's named after the Back 40 trail system in nearby Bella Vista, Arkansas. Those trails are known for steep, challenging climbs and fast, rowdy descents, which is what this bike is designed for. And it so happens to be the type of riding I thrive on. I guess the cool kids these days would call the BC40 a down country bike. I think of it as a cross country race bike with some extra cushion. It's optimized for 120 millimeters of suspension front and rear, which was exactly what I was looking for. The geometry specs also ticked all my boxes, specifically the 66 and a half degree head tube angle and the 76 degree seat tube angle. It's slack and relaxed enough to be stable on techie descents, and you can get your weight forward enough to keep traction and climb like a billy goat. The threaded bottom bracket was also a plus, as well as being able to fit two bottles in the main triangle. And if I do decide to take this baby bike packing, I can shove a nice sized frame bag in that big old center triangle as well. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So for this build, I opted for Fox suspension that I've been loving on my other bikes. You can't beat the plush feel and tunability and bike packing through the harshest environments and terrain. I've been super happy with the reliability and durability as well. I went with the newest Gucciest 34 factory SL Stepcast fork 
and the matching factory float SL shock, and both of them are sporting 120 millimeters of cushy travel. For you weight geeks out there, the brand new SL Stepcast fork weighed in at 1,474 grams before I cut it. This is 85 grams lighter than my previous generation 34 Stepcast. On to the components. First up is the Wolftooth headset that Allied included with the frame set. It features enduro bearings and seems well constructed, which is what I'd expect from Wolftooth. Wolf, Wolftooth. <laughs> they also spec the frame with a Wolftooth seat post clamp. After studying the bike's measurements and consulting Allied, I decided a 50 millimeter stem length would be appropriate, and I chose a Silver Industry 9 A318 stem with five degrees of rise. It weighed in at 155 grams before installing titanium bolts, which dropped the stem's weight down to 147 grams. While we're on the subject, I thought it would be fun to go with a silver and copper theme on this bike to match the suspension and Allied logos. So I hit up Better Bolts in Southern California and swapped the cockpit and brake bolts to titanium versions with a copper finish. All in all, I swapped out over 30 bolts, and in addition to the bling factor, it actually shaved 41 grams off as well. And that's even with most of the brake bolts being titanium already. My handlebars are the tried and true MVM6s. They're carbon with a nice amount of flex. They're 780 millimeters wide, and I've been rocking them for the last few years. They tip the scales at 198 grams. They have a comfy 25 millimeter rise, five degree up sweep, and nine degree back sweep. Another predictable choice are my Ergon GS2 grips, which I've had on pretty much every bike I've owned for at least the last 10 years. Like I've said many times before, they've completely erased my hand pain. You can also go with the GS1s if you don't want the bar ends. For the seat post, I just grabbed the Niner RDO Carbon version that I had lying around. It offers a nice amount of flex and is extremely light. For now, I put on an older Physic Gobi saddle with carbon rails that I had in the parts bin. This is a great saddle that served me well for many cross country races and my day to day riding. But as I get older, my butt is less forgiving, so I do reserve the right to switch it out to my Brooks C13 if necessary. On to the SRAM electronic drivetrain. I've absolutely fallen in love with wireless shifting these days, so I went with a GX axis shifter, a GX axis derailleur, and an XX1 Eagle 1052 cassette. I installed a silver CNC ratio cage on the derailleur for weight savings and the bling factor, as well as their smooth spinning Delrin pulleys. The Axis derailleur mates up to a SRAM UDH hanger, and for funsies, I replaced it with a Silka titanium version, which I happen to have on hand for an upcoming video I'm making on titanium upgrades. It weighs about the same as a stock hanger, but it's supposedly much stiffer and stronger, so I figured why not throw it on and test it out. I'm happy this bike is specced with a threaded bottom bracket, so I don't have to worry about press fits and carbon and all the creaky interface issues. For now, because I got it super cheap, I just went with a standard race face bottom bracket, although I'll probably eventually upgrade it. This houses a set of ultralight race face next SL carbon crank arms with a super stiff and strong 30 millimeter spindle. I found these insanely cheap at the pros closet before they went out of business. I chose 170 millimeter crank arms, which I found to be nice to my knees and a little less prone to pedal strikes. I pulled off the stock direct mount chain ring that came with the cranks and quickly replaced it with a 30 tooth oval ring. That might seem small to some of you, but I have a lot of steep climbing around here, so it suits me well. I've been super happy with the Alu gear ring I installed on my fat bike for the Iditarod a couple years back, and when I saw this super cool aero style version, it had me at hello. If you're curious, the crank set with the Alu gear ring installed weighs in at 443 grams, not too shabby. These were staring at me in the parts bin and they go with the color scheme, so I threw on some Crank Brother Egg Beater 11 pedals. In the past, I've purely reserved these for cross country racing because I'm a little skeptical about titanium spindles, but they're good for now and if I do decide to take a big remote ride or go bikepacking, I'll probably switch them out. Purely for the bling factor and keeping with the color scheme, I went with a SRAM XX1 chain with the copper finish. Not much else to say about that. Stopping power is applied via SRAM G2 Ultimate four piston brakes. I honestly don't think I'll ever go back to two piston brakes for mountain biking. I know there's plenty of haters out there against SRAM brakes, 
but I've personally never had any issues with them and I got these on clearance for a wicked deal and they happen to be silver. So boom. I tossed a 180 millimeter rotor on the front and a 160 in the rear, both center locks, and I sprung for some silver wolf tooth lock rings to tie it all together. And of course, I've got the copper titanium bolts to keep everything matchy matchy. My wheels are Bird Hawk 27s featuring onyx hook flanged hubs and we are one carbon rims with a 27 millimeter internal width. I won't go into much detail here because I already made a dedicated review video, but I absolutely love them. They're light, they're strong, and aesthetically, I think the silver hubs and the white spokes kinda set off the rest of the bike. The tires are still the same ones I used on the Colorado Trail. There's still plenty of life left in them and I love the combo. It's a 2.35 Maxxis Forecaster V1 up front and a 2.3 Continental Cross King in the rear. They're fast and grippy in all conditions and they're perfect for the trails around my house. All in, with pedals and everything, my Dirty Teeth Allied BC40 build weighs in at exactly 23 pounds or 10.44 kilos. Not too bad considering the robust Fox suspension, four piston brakes, Onyx hubs, GS2 grips, etc. It's definitely the lightest full suspension bike I've ever had, and if you really wanted to go weight weenie with your build, I'm sure you could easily get it down near 22 pounds with just a few tweaks. By the way, I just took the maiden voyage on this bike, a couple hours spin around my local trails just to get a feel for it, and without even consciously trying, I set a couple PRs on Strava that I haven't touched in years. So yeah, this bike definitely craves speed, and I'll do my best to oblige. Stay tuned, because I'll 100% be taking it on some bucket list adventures to test its capabilities real soon. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, please give it a like. If you're visiting the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. And if I missed anything, or if you have any questions or thoughts at all, please leave a comment down below. I promise I'll respond. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward.